you need to learn from centres who have delivered uh, a, a quantity of CAR T's already, shared uh, experiences and learning from our patients as well. We need to um, get out there and collaborate with our clinicians, with our practitioners, because actually pharmacists can be the glue that make this come together really safely for patients. The EBMT registry is really the, the, the tool that we should be using to, to quality assess and monitor long-term patients receiving CAR T's. The nurses are an integral part in delivering CAR T's for our patients. Um, we have a wide range of nursing uh, responsibilities from bedside to when the patient goes home and all the follow-up that needs to um, ensue. And how from the nurses' perspective has CAR T cell therapy changed, would you say, over the last 12 months? Well, the, it's been exponential delivery uh, onto our wards um, and the pace of the delivery that we've had to keep up with has been quite challenging. So what have been the main challenges, would you say? I would say the pace of the change, the amount of training that we've had to do in a, in a, a very quick turnaround. Also, managing patients' expectations has been very challenging for us. So what training is required in the nursing team? Well, I think learning about the unique toxicities and the side effect profile that um, CAR T's have has been quite challenging and being able to capture all our nurses including ITU nurses has been uh, difficult. What do you think it would take to roll out CAR T therapy to more hospitals and more teams? I think we need to have uh, again really good communication. You need to learn from centres who have delivered uh, a, a quantity of CAR T's already, shared uh, experiences, and learning from our patients as well. Over the last 12 months, what's really happened is with the advent of the marketed products becoming available, it, it has suddenly burst into being mainstream as they say the CAR-T revolution has arrived and effectively not just research staff need to know about how to manage CAR-Ts it needs to be day-to-day -day work for pharmacists and their teams in hospitals. How difficult is it to set up the cell therapy from, from a pharmacist's perspective? A, a, a CAR-T therapy or any cell therapy is a medicine so fundamentally a pharmacist needs to be aware of putting the patient at the centre of it and making sure that the, th that the, the therapy is optimised and delivered really safely for that patient. So but then there's a few additional complexities with cellular therapies because of the nature of the product being a living product. Um, we need to be understanding very carefully about the, the tracking and tracing of the product with the product often being autologous for an individual personalised therapy. The, um, the consequences of getting this wrong are so huge that we've got to be very, very on top of the operational aspects as well. What challenges have there been in the administration of the new treatment? We need to know a lot about cellular medicines. We haven't got that instilled in our education about um, cells. You know, we come mainly from a chemistry background we, and these are bio biologicals. So we need to um, get out there and collaborate with our clinicians, with our practitioners, with the commercial sponsors, with the manufacturers. And um, because actually pharmacists can be the glue that make this come together really safely for patients. Pharma has quite separate and distinct expectations around how it should be delivered. It doesn't align conveniently with uh, the, Jack, the FACT JC standards. Um, and I think trying to meet the nuances of their procedures has been tricky from an implementation point of view. And how have you met them then? Um, I think uh, most of it's been delivered through on-site inspections, getting their sort of a document packet in advance, having good email communication, contracts, SOPs and so forth. I think it's, it's paved the way and then I think there's also been a lot of chatter amongst the different centres and I think uh, already there's a, a shared understanding of what's involved and, and what kind of lift it takes to get car -Ts to open at your site. It's um, getting your clinical teams familiar with uh, toxicities that they wouldn't necessarily see in an auto, perhaps in an allo setting, getting the pharmacy properly engaged in the management of, of these advanced therapies on receipt and the fact that there was now the interplay between pharmacy and the processing lab or pharmacy and the clinical service. I think that's been a bit of a paradigm shift in how they've had to work. What kind of quality control and, and benchmarking can you put in place for a new therapy? Even the sites that are enrolled are, are really going to have very few patients a year so I think any kind of um, statistical analysis at a site level I think 
will not necessarily be very meaningful. I think there's an opportunity to leverage the EBMT registry. It's really the, the, the tool that we should be using to, to quality assess and monitor long-term patients receiving car -Ts. EBMT TV is brought to you from the 45th annual meeting of the EBMT in Frankfurt, Germany. For more like this, then you can click on some of these great videos. And don't forget to subscribe for more of the best in medicine, from cell therapy to gynaecology, from genetics to psychology.